Don't document your code. Code your document. I understand that this title is a bit arrogant. You must have documentation when you have a good product and somebody has to write the documentation. The title does not want to imply that you do not need the documentation. You need one. It is just that you do not like to write one usually. Nobody likes to write documentation. It's not a hobby. Nobody says on a Saturday afternoon after lunch that, hey, let's have some fun. Let's write some documentation. You play football with the guys out in gardening, read a good book, watch a film, but not write documentation. Documentation writing is a professional activity. And as such, it has to be done using professional tools that avoid human effort as much as possible. I will talk about a tool that will help you hunt down inconsistencies, eliminate repetition, and replace copy-paste operation using information inheritance. My name is Peter Verhash. I work for IPEM Systems as a lead software engineer. I participated in many development projects in various industries where the lion's share of the tasks was documentation. I also wrote many articles and a few books. So I do not feel bragging to say, I have some experience how to writing documentation. I first felt that I need some help writing and managing documentation in 1996, when I created my script basic interpreter. It's a basic language interpreter written in C. It is effortless to embed into applications, even into multi-threaded applications, which was quite rare at that time. It is also simple to create extension models. And these two things later made it ideal to be an embedded scripting interpreter in IoT devices. Device manufacturers embedded it in some routers during the last 26 years, which are not on the market anymore. However, the interpreter is still alive and used in other applications such as banner engineering controllers. Script basic has many built-in commands, each requiring its own documentation. It is a lot. In addition, machines were much more limited than today. So even looking at the source code and editing another document was a tad difficult. It was as simple as moving a mouse and clicking between different windows, but the machine was slow. I started to write documentation as C language comments above the implementation of the individual commands. Then when I was ready with a chunk, I copied the text from the source code to the documentation. Of course, the approach had advantages and disadvantages like everything in life. The benefit was not forgetting to update the documentation in the command whenever I changed the implementation of, the, of a command. Sometimes I still failed, but there is no cure for senility. The backside was that I had to remove the star characters from the start of the lines, and I had to copy the changed chapters from the command to the document, which again, I sometimes forgot or just missed some of the changed parts. Seemingly, we created more problems than we solved, and that is not good. Usually we want to have fewer problems, right? Well, not always. There are situations when we are okay with having more problems in case the problems are simpler. For example, when somebody has cancer and goes through chemo, they had one problem, cancer. After the chemo, they have many issues like hair of loss, fatigue, you name it. But all these problems are manageable. The same was true for the script basic documentation. I had one big problem, human nature and laziness, or just forgetting to update the documentation. So I converted the human problem to many mechanical tasks. For example, copying the text from the source code to the documentation could be done by a script. And if a script does it, then there is no risk of forgetting one or more. That time I wrote Perl scripts. Some of these were specific to the actual documentation process. Others were implementing a simple macro language 
abjectly named Jamal. It was standing for just another macro language, not too ambitious, is it? Later, I wrote Python scripts to handle similar tasks when I was writing my Java book. You can still find it on GitHub under the name Pajama, which can copy and transform code snippets into a document if you write documentation that includes source code fragments. It's a nice tool, but very specific. During the last 25 years of writing blogs, documentation, and books, I gained much experience understanding what it takes to write and maintain documents, and with that, Let's jump to the now. Of course, copying source code fragments or documentation held in the source code is only part of the problem. It is a significant part, but still, it is only a part of the problem that we call documentation maintenance. First, let's look at the issue in a structured way, and let's look at how we can address these issues using the modern version of the Jamal microprocessor, a Java rewrite of the old Perl-based Jamal. This time, the name stands for Java macro language, which is a bit more ambitious. So what are the issues that we face when we maintain documentation? The answer is simple. We forget to update the documentation whenever there is a change in the documented system. There are two approaches to avoid this, and none of them is to pay more attention. A human is a human and to err is human. You can promise to pay more attention, but you will not keep that promise, or it will cost a lot to do so many reviews. We have to automate the documentation update if possible. If not possible, we should check that the documentation is up to date, looking for inconsistencies. Where even that is not possible, we still remain at the mercy of our human effort. Unfortunately, we do not have a sword to cut the Gordian knot, like Alexander the Great, but we do our best to shave off as many layers from the problems as possible. How can we automate the documentation update? First, we need to use some markup that references the documented system, and we need a processor that automatically fetches the information from the documented system. The simplest example is the version of the application. When we are talking about a Java application, then the version usually is in the POM file. It is an XML formatted file and nothing is simpler than reading an XML file and extracting a version. All we need is a processor that can understand the file name and XPath expression and how to insert the value into the output. Jamal can do that, there is a macro for it. An application many times are configured using system properties or environment variables. Wouldn't it be nice to reference the name of the Java variable, possibly static final string, that holds the name of the property or the environment variable, when if ever the code is updated, the document would follow it automatically. Jamal can do that. There is a macro for it. Documentation many times includes code samples, which usually get outdated. Only if we could have these code samples as unit tests mark the beginning and the end of the sample code with some comments and automatically copy the lines to the documentation. Jamal can do that. There is a macro for it. Software source code changes many times and each change alters functionality. Only if we could get a warning every time a class affecting some part of the documentation changes to change the corresponding part. Jamal can do that. There are different macros for it. These are simple examples that we can automate. The entire, though not complete list of features is the following. One, extract information from the program code and insert it into the documentation. Two, place the documentation fragments into the source code as a comment and transfer it from there. Three, check the external consistency of the documentation so that one fraction of the documentation does not contradict the documented code. 
Four, ensure the internal consistency of the documentation so that one fraction of the documentation does not contradict any other part. In the following, I will talk about these four possibilities. The first is to extract information from the program code and insert it into the documentation. It is the case when we fetch the version from the POMXML, insert constant values or sample code into the documentation. Jamal has the concept of snippet for the purpose. A snippet is a multi-line text extracted from the files of the documented system. When a document wants to use snippet, for example, to include source code into the documentation, it invokes the snippet collector macro. This macro reads the source files and looks for snippet lines. A snippet contains the consecutive lines from a source file between a line that includes the word snippet followed by the unique name and lasts until a line consists the word and, and snippet. So and snippet. These are usually commented lines of the source code. You can use the macro snip to insert the content of the snippet into the documentation. It needs the snippet's name. And the result of the macro is the snippet's content. Simply inserting the lines verbatim is very rare. The lines may be indented according to the place in the source code structure, but we do not want them to appear beyond the right margin of the document, of course. Some lines are needed for the code, but would confuse the document reader or simply do not add value to the documentation. An example can be a static code analysis, pragma comment, switching off some warning for a specific line. The same may be true for some line parts. For example, you may not want to include the comments from the end of the line. When someone reads the source code, they are meaningful, but they may not make sense in the documentation already speaking about the same topic. You may even want to convert the lines thoroughly. For example, you may have a unit test code listing assertions. Every line shows sample input and the expected output of the tested system. Apostrophes and Java or other programming language keywords surround these values. You may want to list them as two columns of a table in the document. The snippet handling macro package provides additional functionality to do those. You can kill lines with matching a specific regular expression. You can do string and regular expression based replace on the lines, trim the lines to the left, keep the relative tabulation, and even number the lines. When you place some documentation into the source code, it is easier to update and less prone to be forgotten. It is already the second case. An example is the YAML macro package format macro. This macro has more than 10 different options, each having one description line. These are in commented lines following the option variable initialization. The character structure of the lines is the same, perfect candidate for regular expression transformation. The result is a well-formatted ASCII doc document that gets automatically updated if a new option is introduced. When you reference a snippet by the name and specify a regular expression following the identifier, then the result of the macro will be only the part of the first line that matches the regex. It is the way how we can reference the environment variable in the debugger documentation. It is text-based information retrieval, but this is not the only possibility. When a class or interface field is static and final, it is essentially a constant. If the conversion of the macro runs in the GVM, which also runs the code, these fields can be read by the macros using reflection, and the macro can retrieve the value. The macro processing can run as a unit test and it has several advantages. If there is an error during the compilation of the documentation, the compilation fails. Thus there is no overlooked documentation failure. 
If the variable name changes or gets deleted, the compilation fails. If the value of the constant is not a literal constant, but calculated, then the macro can access the computed value and not only the string of the expression as in the case of the text-based access. The third case, when you cannot directly move information from the source code to the documentation, but you still can do some consistency checks. The simplest is when you know that a specific part of the documentation depends on particular classes or methods. In that case, you can collect the code of the relevant parts and use the snip check macro. The macro has one argument, a long hexadecimal number. The macro calculates the hash code of the snippet and compares it to the argument. If they are the same, then the code has not changed. As soon as the code changes, the hash code also changes and the snip check macro will fail. It is a warning that you must review the documentation before, after, or around the snip check macro. It may also need change. It may also not. After you update the documentation following the code change, you should copy the new hash code displayed in the error message into the document. This time, the macro processing should run without failure, at least at the particular snip check macro. Jamal does not force you to check the hash code of the snippet against any change. Sometimes it's enough if you check the number of lines in it. Using the assertion macro package, you can also fetch numbers, count lines, and make assertions on the result. Finally, the last one is ensuring the internal consistency of the documentation. This is a classical text macro application. You can use a macro for it whenever some text is repeated verbatim or in a similar manner. Macros can have parameters, can evaluate conditions, can repeat text. Suppose the macros do not provide the needed functionality. In that case, you can write your own macros in Java or embed Groovy, Ruby, Java, JavaScript, or basic code into the text, which Jamal will execute during the macro processing. Literally, there is nothing you cannot code in your document. But of course, the can do does not mean must do. Jamal is mighty and great power must be accompanied by great responsibility. The most significant weakness of Jamal is that you can overcomplicate your macros very easily, restrain yourself. Even though you can debug Jamal processing in an environment using a web-based graphical debugger, it should not lure you into troubled waters. Do not try to replace your markup with Jamal processing, even though it has a markdown macro for a very particular use. Use markdown, ASCII doc, or any other format you used before and use Jamal as a preprocessor. Let Jamal do the consistency assurance and information gathering and your formatter to generate the output.